Hi everyone, it's Sunday the 15th of August and it's one o'clock in the afternoon and this is part two of the Saracen Raw rebuild or project, however you want to call it. Uh, in this video I want to fit the new headset and a new bottom bracket. I did want to reinstall the forks but that didn't quite go to plan this morning so I'm going to look for a replacement set. Um, I didn't have much luck. Um, I did prep them all, start prepping them last night ready for spraying this morning. Went out and got the spray along with a new bottom bracket and uh, took them downstairs, hung them up at, um, under a tree with a bungee cord. It was going all okay. I um, did notice some parts that started to sort of like flake or bubble or something so I got some sandpaper. I sanded that at those areas down. Attacked it was, or was in the process of attacking those with the primer again as well as giving it all a second coat. And they fell off the bungee cord into the dirt. So they got all that wet paint got covered in mud. My fault, I should have actually put something on the dirt so that wouldn't have happened. The worst that would have happened would have been a bit of paint peeled, which I could have gone over again with the paint. But, um,. By that point, I just thought these forks really aren't worth it because they aren't looking good anyway. Um, they're just requiring a lot more work and whatnot than it's actually worth. So I'm just I'm I'm watching a couple of pairs on eBay that I might go for later. I don't know yet. Um, so yeah, no forks. You could say I'm forked off. Uh -huh. Anyway. Before we go over there to fit these parts, I'll just show you what I've picked up and some of the tools that we're going to be using. So, a block of wood. That is actually to help insert the new cones for the new headset. So, when you buy a new headset, you get your bearings with it. Those ones don't want to come out there, but that's not a problem. So that I've got um, sealed bearings with this. You get new cups that go top and bottom of your frame, like that. Which is what this is going to help reinstall. Because you don't want to hit these directly with a hammer. And I haven't got the proper tool to help pull these into place. So a trick is just to get a block of wood and do it by eye. Can be done. I have done it. But if you've got the proper tool. You're always better off using the proper tool, no matter what the job is. So you get those, um, you get like the upper bearing cone. I'm guessing that's what that would be called, because that sits in the top. Um, I'm not too sure what that is, that looks like just a, a different variation of a bearing cone. I suppose it depends what spaces and things you're using. You also get like your dust cover thing to go on top of all that. You also get what they call a flower that goes on top of your steer tube on your fork and then once you've got your stem on top of everything you put your little bolt in with your cap there and that just pulls everything together and of course the tighter you screw this down the tighter everything is on your um, steer. So you don't want to go too tight, you don't want to go too loose. Um, but depending on what forks I get, they may or may not have that. But once you've got these in, you can't get them out. So if you end up having to like cut down your steering tube because it's too long, then you'd probably need a new one of them. That's what you get with your headset kit. Now, the bottom bracket I got, I'm going to spray that with a bit of WD because it's a bit, uh, a bit graunchy this side. But I think it's just been on the shelf for a while. That's a bit better. <laughs> now my fingers are slipping because they won't grip it. <laughs> anyway, this was cheap so I'm not that worried about it. Um, it did have one thing missing from the box which was the lock ring. It goes around the other side. But I've got one off the old one anyway so it doesn't matter. 
this is what they call a semi-sealed bottom bracket because it's only the right hand side that's sealed on these that's your left side and that's just got the normal open caged bearings in which are all pre-greased you don't have to grease them they come with that like plastic insert as well I'm not sure what that is if it's just to hold it in there better or but I've noticed these um, semi-sealed ones are the only ones that come with that plastic insert and that's to go against this to help it you know mate better <laughs> no idea but with those you should get the lock ring like I said that was missing because the box was open but you also get some new bolts as well so if I clean the crank up I could actually install that as well although I want to clean the frame that's something else we could do in this video right what I'm going to do is just grab a bunch of bits <laughs> aka the headset, screwdriver, hammer and the knock and block and uh, I'll turn you around, I'll go and drop all of this off and then I'll make sure you guys have a good view of the headset and I'm going to be standing around the other side of the bike so I think the side I want to be on bring the tray around this end Headset on there. What a hammer's always a pain in the backside. No, doesn't want to play ball. Right. What I want to do is give you a good shot. The headset area, hopefully. So, that's what I'm going to be working on. I need to look at that rather than my ugly mug. Right. Now, like I said, you can get tools to help um, remove these. But really, all you need is a little hammer, a nice long flathead screwdriver, Slide it down there till you feel it stop on something. And if you alternate from side to side, so I've just done it on this side, I'm going to put it down on the front side and give it another tap. And just, I'm just going to repeat that over and over until I get it out. Just like that. Simple as that. And just the same for the top one, but uh, you know, in reverse, you go from the, you go from the um, bottom. What you should do, sugar, now that I think about it. Turn the frame up the other way. <laughs> right. Now oh, I can just work it out that way. It'll be easier. Big brain moment. Yep, it's a common. that. Right, I'm going to take the bearings out of the uh, new ones. Make sure there's no crap in there. So again these are just friction fit. So what I do is I haven't got the correct tool. And what I'm also going to do is just level this up. on dear heads I just need to make sure we are all good just in view 
what I want to do. I should have done that really in the first place. There we go. Right, so what I need to do is get that sitting on there as level as I can. Get me a wooden block. I'll just do the reverse of taking it out and just make sure that you are square all the way around. But in theory, using a bit of wood like this, I find, and it does, actually go in very nicely like that. That is nice and square and flat all the way around. Give it a few, a few more taps for luck. Just roll me frame around. And we'll do the top side. Again, I'm going to take the bearings out of that. Sit that on there. That is it. I really can't do much else with this headset because I haven't got my forks. That side went in even easier. And... Just like that, we're in. I can't really put the bearings in that side because I don't think they're going to stay in there, are they? Yep. There is a right way to put these in as well. Believe it or not. That go in there. And of course, you put your little silver car in, it in on top. Dust cover on top of that. Of course you put your forks up, put your stem and any required spaces on that you need, and stick your bottom, job done. Next job is the bottom bracket. I think I've actually got some polish, I think cleaning that frame shouldn't be too bad. Um, I, ha I will admit I've actually had difficulty finding red forks. Um, <laughs> Because obviously I want red to match this. I could go for black, but then I just think that's too much black and would look a bit odd, so... I've gone for, um... Going for red. I found a couple of pairs of red, but... I really don't want to go through the faff of, um... Painting them all up. Right. The bottom bracket. With semi-sealed BBs, you always start from the right side. You put your right side in. Well, I suppose you could start from the left, but uh, I always start from the right anyway. Get the crap out of threads, and you've got to remember that this side is reverse thread. So whereas normally we would go that way to t uh, do up, we'd have to go this way, backwards. So. That is actually screwing in there very, very nicely. This side was an absolute pig to take out. Is my big adjustable wrench back in the toolbox? Um, no. <laughs> yes. I should be able to do this side without having to put my washer and nut on trick. As I'm doing it, and I'm see I went the wrong way. Do that up nice and tight. Same for the other side. Normal thread this side, so righty tighty. You just got to keep going until uh, 
you don't feel any play in the axle. You don't want to go too tight. Ooh. Nearly there. Just there. This bottom bracket going to be a pain like the last one was and keep coming loose. Tried one of these on another bike. Wee bit tight. <laughs> Wee bit too tight. It's a bit loose, I'm going to try it. There. Now, where did I put my lock ring? I'm sure I pulled that over as well. I did. So, just like that, that is the first of our new parts installed. Um, can't go any further with this bit, the headset, because uh, it's me pointing at the bit and you can't even see it on camera. Duh. But anyway, I can't go any further with the headset because uh, I haven't got any forks. Um, I can't do V-brakes because I haven't got those yet. I'm actually watching a set on eBay. A set of Shimano Dior. Saw those. I only want a tenner for the pair. Well, that's the starting bid anyway. Um, so, I thought, as this has got a Shimano Dior crank, I might as well go for the matching um, V-brakes. I've got such big feet at the minute. <laughs> I'm actually not sure if it's big feet or if it's just me being wee clumsy. A bit of both, I think. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is just whisk to the kitchen and get my uh, furniture polish. With the furniture polish, it's just some cheap stuff I get out of Lidl's, W5 brand. When I say cheap stuff, it's not actually bad, this W5 brand, to be honest. I know a lot of, there's, well, I was going to say a lot of people look down on Lidl's, it's not exactly true, is it? I know there's people that look down on Lidl's, and I was being cheap and horrible, but my experience, it's not bad stuff. I'm going to clean the frame down now. It's going to be easier to do this with everything off of it than it will be when everything is bolted on. found photos of the original Saracen Roar I had. This part was a lighter shade of red, but for some reason, just like this one, that and the forks were still two different shades of red. So I don't know if that was a thing on these bikes. Right. Nice if I could have found like another cheap second hand bike that I could have pinched the forks from. Never mind. The other thing I noticed when I was looking at the photos of my old Saracen and Raw, paintwork is actually in better condition on this. Aside from what the front forks look like. <laughs> um, but the main frame and the rear swinging arm. It's actually in better, yeah, this is in better condition than my old one, that's what I was trying to say. Don't 
To be honest, there's not a lot of grease and muck on the inside of the swinging arm. Usually on this area of the bike, because of where your chain is and everything, and your back wheel and whatnot, flinging dirt up, it, I'm going to find that it usually gets quite uh, filthy and full of a lot of crap. But I'm guessing this bike was cleaned on quite a regular basis, either that or barely ever used because there really isn't a lot in here. I mean, you usually find it caked in brake dust around this sort of area and on the forks and that wasn't bad on either. So, just throw me duster on the floor. Yeah, it's just an old t-shirt that don't fit me anymore. I'm just using it as like a rag stroke duster. I kept thinking this was bent, but it isn't. That's the Dralia hanger. It's actually fine. Naturally, there's some paint scratch and wear and wear. The wheel fixes in. It's common on just about every bike I've ever come across, so it doesn't bother me. I do want a different seat post clamp, and I can't remember if I kept any. When um, I had to clear out, I think I did keep a few, but I've got to find them. Yes, I did. I kept a few of the good ones. But I can't remember where I've put them. <laughs> so I'll have to go digging in the shed again. So I really don't like the one that came off of this. I was going to see if I could change these bolts in here. If these will actually uh, extract, because sometimes they get stuck in there quite well. Because they're rusty and I don't like the look of them. <clears throat> I did have a load, but I got rid of them with all the other bike parts. Besides that, they were rusty as well, so there's no point changing a rusty bolt. A rusty bolt. Right, so that's all good. I'm not quite sure what that bit is. Because I haven't used it and it doesn't feel like I need it. Headstock's fine. The frame really isn't in too bad shape. It's one of the reasons I chose to um, go ahead with this project. Saracen Team, limited edition. 7005 aluminium frame, which I believe is the same type of aluminium frame as my um, grey clawed butler. I think, or is that, actually I can't remember now if that one was a 7,005 or a 6,005, I'll have to have a look when I'm next in the shed. But, uh, that's, that's pretty much all I can do unless I want to bolt these back on. Wrong side, it's not going to work that side is it, that's where I need my, my gears. wear on the teeth but there is still plenty of life left in them. It's a pity I didn't have my um, hybrid clawed butler on up here because then I could have compared them and uh, shown you what true worn out teeth look like. Because <laughs> on my clawed butler this chain ring is absolutely stuffed on it. Kanakad. Let's, let's get this on. What I was actually worried of, and I don't think I need to be. I think this part of this is still good, it's just this end that was gone. Um, is your length, your spindle length. But uh, as that one wasn't labelled on the box for its length, and it was semi-sealed, I just went by the assumption that it was going to be the same as this, and it looks like that was a good assumption. <laughs> So, one thing I haven't got is the caps to go in there, but that doesn't normally worry me. I've never studied that part of the bike anyway. Right. 
suppose one thing I could do is prepare the uh, handlebars. I think my socket is still out here, isn't it? Yes. Same problem the other side. Is this a defective bottom bracket? If it is defective, I'll just take it out and put the old one back in, but with the new new bit this side. Ooh, that one's cutting out a bit close. Well, this side's going on alright. side off. I put the wrong cap on. That's the new one, that's the old one. Whoops. Right. <laughs> what tip? Glad it's just this side and not the other one. Right. So even those of us that have been doing it for years make mistakes. Silly mistakes. Get back on there. I just wish I'd noticed that before I'd put this on. Because now I've got to take that off again. Come back. I'm going to lose you. Right, so I need my extraction tool and a 15mm wrench should do the trick for this. I feel like a complete pillock. Right. I've only just put it on here, it should pull off quite easily. I don't know how the heck I managed to do this though. Did I do? Oh, they're over here. That's alright. Right. Put a lock ring there. So that's where it is. Okay. Yep, 
Now here's the old one. <laughs> Look at that, just got that bolt to bloody tank. That's typical. Without even trying, I got it to take. Alright. Oh, that's the other thing I need to find. Um, some pedals. I'll show you what type of pedals I want to get. I've actually got the type I want, but the uh, thread's too small. So, unfortunately, they don't fit. The thread for in there is too small on the pedals I've got. I need a larger thread. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Just got to take the extractor off. Bolt, grab the ratchet. The ratchet into the right direction. Put me crank back on. One thing I could have actually done is put my um, Duralium X on, but I haven't actually cleaned those up yet. And I don't want this video to go on for ages and ages, so I'll just do this. <laughs> that is bad for a brand new bottom bracket, isn't it? Sounds like a seal. Maybe. If I'm lucky, the more I use it and do this, it might, uh... It's actually echoing up the frame. Right, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so that's part two. So we've got bottom bracket, crank, and a new headset in, and the frame cleaned. Still a long way to go yet. I've still got Dralium X, seat post, seat, handlebars, forks, wheels, cables. I've actually got some um, outer cabling coming. I've bought some blue. I thought blue might look nice on this. So, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you, hopefully, in the next one.
bye